The world's seas are full of fishes, each species with its own special adaptations, its own ways of making a living, its own methods of survival in a harsh environment. Among the more skillful and original in its approach, not merely to staying alive, but to doing very well for itself, is a tiny member of the colorful damselfish family. Because of their harlequinesque coloring and slightly chaplinesque style of movement, they are often called clownfish. But due to an extraordinary feature of their lifestyle, they are listed in the field guides as anemone fish. They are fish that have an intimate relationship with that voluptuous flower-like creature of the tropical sea bottom, the sea anemone. And here's what's remarkable about that. Those sensuously billowing, pillow-shaped arms of the sea anemone are to most sea creatures deadly traps. The anemone is not a plant. It is a carnivorous animal. It shoots poison into anything that ventures within striking distance, paralyzes it, and eats it. Yet the innocently darting anemone fish swims past unharmed, even lives within its welcoming folds, completely immune from its normally deadly venom. How it does this is one of the many small miracles of nature. And that's only one of the tricks this amazing magician of the sea has up its scaly sleeve. Anemone fish are found only in the oceans of the Indo-Pacific. The white-tipped, the rarest of all, inhabits the beautiful coral reefs that lie like necklaces around the tropical islands of Kurama near Okinawa, south of Japan. It is a curious and perhaps surprising fact of nature that tropical waters support many fewer fish than do the cold oceans. As if to make up for that lack, those that are here are more varied in species and more colorful. Take the ring-eyed hawkfish, body a smart shade of pale green, a delicate orange around the mouth and chin, and a striking line of black eye pencil. You'd certainly never catch a Canadian cod or flounder looking like that. Their habits are different too. Having long strands of black coral available, they use them as homesteads. Diminutive coral gobies live here permanently and feed on the coral itself. These black and white damselfish, close relatives of the anemone fish, find safe haven within the forests of yellow coral. Among the same finger-like branches, ghostly blue pullerfish dance back and forth like a gracefully costumed corps de ballet of the coral reef. The rare white-tipped anemone fish, meanwhile, move casually among the folds of a nearby green sea anemone in what ought to be a dance of death. But it isn't. The lethally poisoned sea anemone and this smart little black and white species of damselfish have achieved one of the strangest relationships in all of nature. Zoologists call it mutualism. It could more simply be described as a happy state of you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. Within the protective caves and crevices of their friend, the stinging anemone, they are safe from attackers. In return, they bring offerings of food to their host. They also act as decoys, luring other fish to their doom in the tentacles of the always hungry anemone. But that's only the beginning of the anemone fish's amazing story. For example, these two are brothers. As their lives unfold, they could become sisters. They could even become a male and female, mate and produce a family of their own, several hundred strong, all male. 
some of whom will in their turn become females and start the whole strange business all over again. Such are the curious habits of the anemone fish, the fish who dwell within the arms of a large life form which is poisonous. Spring comes to these warm southern islands. The air is charged with the timeless electricity of the season. The earth is alive with regeneration and new life. And a fever of reproduction spreads like a dancing cloud over both land and sea. It's mating time in the tropics. The five-banded damselfish, known by their stripes as Sergeant's Major, swim restlessly. A male blue puller, the madness of the season upon him, searches frantically for his mate. And finds her. Obeying the irresistible imperative of their species, they swim eagerly around one another, each exciting the other to a sexual peak. With a convulsive shuddering of her body, the female lays her eggs, over which the male immediately showers a fertilizing charge of his sperm. Now the surrounding waters are teeming with hyperactive pullers, all driven by a mad desire to reproduce themselves, to fill the world's seas with millions of new pullers. Agitated females hurriedly lay their eggs, and wildly dashing males, their dorsal fins erect and quivering, rush to spray the tiny clusters with their fertilizing milt. Normally blue, the pullers now turn yellow out of sheer seasonal excitement. The seafloor is a frenzy of activity. A stray branch of coral falls amidst the bed of eggs. The male damselfish scurries to remove the offending object and quickly returns to watch over his charges. Each species has its own techniques for survival. Slender sweepers gather in schools and respond to threats like a huge, well-trained squadron of fighter planes. Some young fish confuse their enemies by wearing a false eye on their back ends. Certain butterflies do this too. The Kalubo wrasse, a harmless creature, avoids being eaten by wearing the colors of a well-known poisonous fish. And then there are the predators, the ones looking for smaller fish to eat. Rockfish look like part of the landscape when they lie in wait for prey. The paper fish, almost transparent, nearly invisible, and apparently very sad. Night falls, and the daily drama of the sea, the struggle for life, slows, but it does not stop. Billions of tons of plankton remain constantly on the move, food for the masses of coral that lie in wait on the floor of these tropical seas. The yellow anemone opens its welcoming blossoms, ready to snap them shut on any passing meal. In fact, the giant anemone writhing sensuously in the warm currents of the seafloor, is a monster, a killer of the deep. It zaps its victims with tiny poisonous harpoons that explode on contact and cause instant paralysis. Then it eats them. But not this little clown, the anemone fish. They are its good friends. They are, zoologically speaking, wrapped up in each other. The world of nature is rife with strange phenomena, with the curious, often amazing results of millions of years of evolution. Few creatures are better exemplars of the wonders of natural adaptation than are the anemone fish. It's not dumb accident that lets them live safely within the protective tentacles of the poisonous anemone. This is adaptive behavior. They coat their bodies with a special self-generated mucus that renders them immune to the anemone's normally lethal chemicals. They know instinctively 
but the safe place to make a nest is in close proximity to their protector. Male and female work together to clean a piece of rock right under the anemone. This cooperation, unusual among fish, is another survival adaptation. Also unusual, anemone fish live together in families, a good support structure. During breeding, the second ranking male stands by, hopefully. The business of nest making arouses them sexually. She quivers, vibrates, and begins laying her bright red eggs. swims carefully into place, emits his cloud of milt, and fertilizes them. In some 90% of all fish species, the male would now turn tail and go his own way, turning up again only at next breeding season. But again, the anemone fish shows its specialness. Male and female will together mount guard over the eggs and do their best to protect them against all comers. It won't be easy. Fish eggs are a delicacy of the deep. These tropical waters teem with mouths hungry for a feed of clownfish caviar. drama on the sea floor. The light blue fish, a white spotted puller, is the father of the eggs on which the others are feeding. Agitated in the extreme, he has actually turned pale as he fights gamely to protect what he'd hoped would be his new family. Alas, the brave warrior is badly outnumbered. The banquet is over, and he is alone with an empty nest. The cardinal fish does things differently. He carries the family eggs behind those sharp teeth in his mouth. Meanwhile, the folds and billows of their complacent host continue to shelter the anemone fish's unhatched progeny. To attack these succulent-looking tidbits would be to invite a shower of deadly poison as an instant reward. Watchful nevertheless, the male white-tipped anemone fish continues his patrol. His guard is up. He is ready for anything, including a spell of duty, fanning the eggs. Stirring up the water brings in fresh oxygen. Hovering nearby is a junior male, a family member. His ambition, astonishingly, is not just to replace dad as chief egg fertilizer. He wants to be mum and lay the eggs. And this is the most sensational of all the anemone fish's survival skills. When the dominant female, the mum, dies, the strongest male takes her place and becomes female. The anemone fish is one of the select few animals in the world of nature that can, if it's an environmental advantage to do so, change sex. Dad becomes mum, and a younger brother becomes dad, and the family keeps on doing it. As the time for hatching comes closer, the present senior male, the dad of the moment, fans ever more furiously.
his efforts are rewarded. As the eggs develop, they turn silvery and the embryos become visible, peeking shyly out of the world. He increases the rate of fanning. This not only brings more oxygen, it's a signal to the embryos that their debut is imminent. The female joins in, and together they churn the water furiously. They are under harsh time pressure. The young will have the best chance of survival if born at flood tide, which will come in a matter of hours. Instinctively aware of their life and death deadline, the parent anemone fish work frantically together through the long, weary, moonlit night. Then disaster strikes. Biologists have never before witnessed the hatching of the eggs of the rare white-tipped anemone fish. Apparently, just as the moment of truth was near, the fish became spooked by the cameras and stopped fanning. The female hangs motionless and upside down. The male, disoriented, seems to stumble about in confusion. The almost hatched eggs are ignored. The camera crew has now installed remotely controlled equipment. They decide to see if red lights would be less disturbing to the confused fish. That seems to work. Barely visible, they have apparently resumed their critical work. Now, more light seems not to bother them. The fanning becomes more furious than ever. And at last, it begins to have its desired effect. Escaping now from their gelatin shells, first a few at a time, then by the dozen, the newborn fish begin to float upward. Encouraged, the male fans even more energetically. Then, crisis is over. A cloud of hatchlings floats upward from the ocean floor. A new generation of white-tipped anemone fish flashes out onto the world stage. The cycle begins again. Even here, the survival instincts of the species are evident. Hatched by the light of the moon on a flood tide, they will be carried far and wide, spreading their populations and preventing overcrowding. And they hatch out in such huge numbers that even if most of them become food for the rest of the fish of the sea, enough will remain to ensure the success of new generations. In time, those few that make it to adulthood will find protective anemones of their own and set up housekeeping. There will be a senior female, and a senior male trying to replace her and change sex, and a bevy of young willing to go either way as opportunities arise. And so the unceasing, fascinating drama of life will continue to unfold in the warm seas of the Indo-Pacific. It looks like a peaceful, serene paradise. Yet it is, like every other part of the world of wildlife, an arena of life and death a theater of destiny. Beneath the waves, it's a fish-eat-fish -fish world, 
where mere survival is the ultimate success. And when it comes to success stories among the hundreds of species of colorful creatures that live their dangerous lives in these bizarre surroundings, none can claim a greater array of astonishing survival skills than that special damselfish that lives in the sheltering arms of the normally poisonous anemone. He may be called a clown, but he or she is one smart fish. Thank you.